Are you looking for truth from God's word that you can understand and apply to your life? You'll find it today on Make It Clear with Dr. Stan Pons, Bible teacher and president of Clarity Christian College, formerly known as Florida Bible College. Listen now as Stan makes it clear. Man, that is so cool. He abides with me forever. Now, I, I'm not getting into political things here. That's something you can do on your own if you want to talk to me privately. I will get into it with you. But for right now, just think for a moment about John McCain. Not so much about a president, but I want you to think about a POW. Can you imagine what it's like to feel like you're all alone from family, all alone from everybody? I can tell you that some of you, watch this now, watch this, watch this. You may be lonely. He never promises us that we won't go through periods of being lonely. But I can promise you this, if you know Christ as Savior, you will never be alone. And listen, if I had to have only one person with me, I'm so glad that I have God with me in the person of the Holy Spirit. Let's go to the second bullet point. This one here I know is not a very popular one, but I need to bring this to your attention. It says here, is not received by everyone. That means some of you will not have the Holy Spirit abide with you forever. That's right. You listening on the radio or getting this CD, on the authority of God's word, I will tell you that there'll be some of you that will not get the Holy Spirit. He will not abide with you forever. Who would that be? Let's go back to the verse. It says, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. I've given you other references, 1 Corinthians, others, that says this, that an unsaved person who has not trusted Christ as Savior is spiritually blind, he is spiritually ignorant of spiritual matters, he cannot know the things of God because the Spirit of God is not within him. Are, are you okay with me? Are you still tracking with me so far? I don't know if this microphone is, but are you tracking with me? Right. The Holy Spirit in God would be light. The light comes inside of me when I trust Christ as Savior, so now I have light. Jesus is the light of the world. All right. Now he's inside of me. If I do not trust Christ as Savior, I do not have the light of the glorious gospel inside of me. That means that I cannot truly know the things of God. One person said it this way. An unsaved person, a person who has not trusted Christ is his only way to heaven. Now, he can have a lot of spiritual stuff. He can do a lot of good stuff for humanity. He can die a sacrificial death, jumping in front of a bullet or a spear. But that doesn't get him into heaven because he's chosen to do all of that for whatever reason, apart from what God says is the only way to get to heaven is by faith alone. That person is, t is described like this. That he's a blind person in a dark room looking for a black cat that's not even there. That's how the world is. So the Holy Spirit will not abide with that person until that person responds to the beginning of the Holy Spirit's work in his life by convicting him of sin and pointing him to Christ by faith alone. Okay? And so once that happens, then he has the Holy Spirit. So let me pause and give this to you. Please trust Christ as your Savior. I applaud you on any good deed you do, any spiritual thing you do, or how you live your life. I think it's great... You're just making perhaps the earth a better place for you to go to hell from. And for us to live in a better place until we go to the best place, which is heaven by faith alone. And the good news is, gospel good news, is you don't have to be in that condition. You can trust Christ and have everlasting life. Look at the third bullet point. He is resident within Christians. In other words, he doesn't merely abide on the outside of you, but he also lives on the inside of you. He comes inside of you. That is so cool. He's with me forever, but he abides with me inside of me forever. Look at the verse. Look at the verse. He dwells with you and will be in you. Now, Romans 8, 9 and through 11 says this. Just listen. You don't, you, don't, you, you don't have it on your sheet. Just listen. It says, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. In other words, he's in the world. He doesn't have the Holy Spirit. But the spirit is life because the body is dead because of sin but the spirit is life because of righteousness but if the spirit of him of Christ who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you watch this listen 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 he who raised Christ from the dead will also give your life your mortal bodies life through the Holy Spirit so cool this is so cool here's dead Jesus on the cross he was dead you know D-E-D -E -D, dead 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 you know dead Gave him life, came back to life again. That spirit of God that did that to Christ because Christ was God, is God, I should say now, all right? 
That same spirit that did that to Christ will do that to you and me. And so if he could raise Christ from the dead, which he did, he will raise you from the dead and you can have everlasting life because Christ and the Holy Spirit are one and together. Now, for some of you that need a little bit of an illustration, I don't know if this will work for you, but how many of you take medicine of some kind? You, you, you need to take medicine. Would you raise your hand? Okay. Wow, a lot of you. Okay. Those of you that take medicine, have you ever gone on a trip off island for a number of days that take medicine? Now, would you raise your hand? Now, when you do, is it not true that your mate usually says, Did you remember to pack your medicine? Did you pack your pills? You got your pills with you? And then if you forget your pills, why didn't you remind me? You know, it's one of those things. You know what I'm saying. Now, here's the illustration. That medicine in a bottle, okay, you take the medicine so the medicine is inside of you, but the medicine is also a side that you have it with you, all right? So the Holy Spirit, not these medicine, you can go too far with these things, but in a sense, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, but he also abides with you. He's with every part of your being. And the neat part about it, the purpose isn't merely to make you better. The purpose is so that God would get glorified through Christ. And so he's working with us so that God would get all the glory. So it's all about him and not just about us. So that's the beauty of the Spirit. Now, I need to bring this to a close, I know but we're going to a crescendo here. Yes, we can talk about the promise. We can talk about the person. We can even talk about the presence, meaning where he's located. But I want you to know that all of that is good, sound, academic theology for you. But if it doesn't change your life, all you've got is dead orthodoxy. And so number four is this, the power of the Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. Whew, I love speaking about this. I like to tell you a little anecdote and I'll bring in this power thing here. Most of you know that at one time Carol and I pastored in beautiful upstate New York. And it's really beautiful about two days out of the year and maybe one snowfall, okay? And a couple of days in the fall when the leaves change. After that, it's just upstate New York. So anyway, this one winter, it was the winter of 93. And if those of you that followed the mainland weather, you remember it was the famous blizzard of 93. And a little bit we were excited about it because this was our first blizzard in beautiful upstate New York. Well, it was happening on a Saturday, Saturday afternoon, Saturday night. And if you've ever been in a blizzard, snow doesn't fall like it does in the Hallmark cards. Okay, it shoots sideways at a million miles an hour. I'm exaggerating, but it's going this way and it's piling up everywhere. The wind is howling. It cuts right through you. So now it's time for us to go to bed. It's Saturday night. Got church next morning. I'm wondering, are we going to call officer? What are we going to do about tomorrow? And so I'm shutting off the lights, and as I shut off the front door porch light, I'm looking out. They gave us a parsonage to live in. It was a huge lawn, a beautiful, pristine pastoral lawn, acre, two acres in front of us. And I'm looking out there, and I put my arm around Carol, and we're watching the blizzard, the lights out. You can kind of see the little flickering lights of other houses around, seeing it blow. And way out in the distance, Carol sees about three-quarters of an acre in front of us, something wiggling in the snow. And I'm ready for bed. And she says, Stan, there's an animal caught out there. He's struggling in the snow. I said, ah, it's, it's, it'll be all right. It's, it's an outside thing, you know. It'll be all right. No, it's struggling. It's flapping all around. You've got to go save that thing. Now, if you don't know my wife, let me tell you about my wife. She loves animals. I guess it's good because she loves me, but she loves animals. If I believed in reincarnation, I'd like to die and come back as a cat in Carol's family. You can think about that. So I'm looking at that. She says, please, please, please rescue that thing. I said, this is a blizzard. People go out in a blizzard and they never come back. She says, rescue this thing. She says, I'll keep the light on for you, you know, so you can see where the front door is. I said, okay. And, you know, you don't just, okay, go, 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 go out there. You've got to now take off your pajamas, put on long underwear. You've got to put on the heavy clothes, put on this, put on the gloves, put on the hat, put on the scarf, get out there with the ski kind of mask. And so you're trudging, not a little flaky snow. You, it's up to here. And so you're shuffling and shoving and you're catching it and you're getting closer and closer to this thing. And I'm thinking, it's got to be a wolf or something stuck out there. It'll probably eat me, you know? So I'm working my way out to this animal out there. And finally I see this thing. And sure enough, it's flapping all around out there. And I know Carol is looking at me and just making sure. So I grab this thing. And I went, ah, and I fell back into the snow like that. And I thought, boy, I really got it. What it was, it was nothing more. We forgot we had a little tree that now, this thing is now, the snow is up to the top of it. It was just the top little branch doing this thing, you know? And so now I'm thinking, I'm laying in the snow, and I'm saying, that'll teach her, that'll teach her, you know? You know, and I thought, I better not do this, because she'll now come out after me. You know how you guys you rescue your, your poor dumb husband and all that. So I just looked at the animal, and I said, 
And I kind of sh- trudged back in again, and I told her it was nothing big and all that. Now that morning, though, we turned on the radio, and it was funny because announcers were announcing in this little small upstate community, there is no church meeting because the power is gone. And I thought about that in this message, that there are a lot of churches that still meet when the power, not electric, but the power is gone. And I'm wondering how many of you as Christians, the power is there latently inside of us in the Holy Spirit, but it's it's not activated. And I hope that would not be the case with us. I got a slide I've asked my dear brother Stephen to flip up on the screen. I don't know if you can see that real well. This was sent to me recently, and I thought it was so cool, I wanted to share it with you. There's actually, some people said there's two power sources there. Can you see the lightning? This was taken in Texas. I don't know if it was digitally enhanced or not. I don't think it was. But this guy was out there by his truck, and he was taking a picture of the rig. He was trying to get a picture of the, 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 the oil rig. Just when he did that, the lightning hit, and he saw out in the distance was this tornado heading right that way. And so people say, wow, look at the power. There's actually three power sources. There's power in the oil. You already know about that. Then you've got the power of the wind and then you get the power of the lightning all three of those power sources have been created by whom everyone God all right but yet that is not God yet when you think about it, you get hit by lightning you'll know it if you get hit by that tornado you'll know it and if you light a match around a, 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 a oil rig you'll know it those three power sources affect the outside of us but still does not equate to the power of God now, if you could, and I know this is going to get hokey again, you take the lightning, you put the, the tornado, and you put that oil rig inside of us and represent all that that power is just in that one slide, let alone all over the world for all over time, that would not equate to the equality of the power of the Holy Spirit that God chose to give to us by merely trusting Christ as Savior. Now, why did He give us that power? Let me give you a couple of reasons right here, and you can jot these down. One is the power for life. He gave us the power for life. Some of you are going through some terrific struggles right now. Even if I started mentioning generally our church is small enough, you might even know who they might be. So I have to be careful about that. So so general, I'm going to say, some of you are going through some relational challenges right now in your life. Some of you financially are watching your retirement just circle the commode. You're watching things with your health. You know you've got to go in. There's an issue with your health. Now, I can't promise you that the Holy Spirit is going to give you all your money back. I can't promise you that relationships will come lovey-dovey, licky-kissy-facey thing back. I can't promise you that you'll walk out like Superman or Superwoman. I can't promise you that. But I can promise you through the power of the Holy Spirit that not only will you be a survivor in life, but you'll be a thriver in life. I can promise you that from the inside, you don't have to bite the bullet and endure life, but that you can cheerfully endure whatever that life is because it's all part of the Holy Spirit that's all within inside of you. And I want you to know that that's where you can go when you go back to the Spirit of God. Now, some of you, most of the time, you might hear that from other speakers, other preachers. But here's the component that I think is the most important of all that's left out. People will gravitate to that and they'll say, give me the power, give me that Holy Spirit. I want to have him because I need to get through life. Have you noticed what I just said? Give me, I, my, my life. The whole purpose that the Holy Spirit gives you this is so that you can go through this life better so you then would give God all the credit, God all the glory, and that others might see Christ in you and you can point them to Christ so it's not about us. It's all about us becoming a Teflon Christian to give glory to the Lord. That's the part you often don't hear. That's the difference between a good body of believers and a great body of believers when they put Christ at the center of this thing and for His glory. The second bullet point would be the power that we have is for outreach. Very similar, but the power for outreach. That's where the verse came in in your outline there, Acts chapter 1. Before the Spirit came in chapter 2, in Acts chapter 1, it talks about, and you shall receive power. What he's saying is, and you shall receive the Holy Spirit. And that's the power that you're going to get, and that power is for outreach. Now, how do I apply that to people like you and me? Now, you might think that someone who's been, you know, saved a long time, a pastor of a church, earned doctorate degree, I'm not trying to flash things in front of you. I'm trying to say that a lot of people think, well, because you've got that, that must make you very bold in your outreach. That must make you find it so easy to connect to those who don't know the Lord. Listen, people, 
you're looking at a person that's wrapped in the same kind of flesh and clothes that you have. When I sit on a plane and I have to talk to someone about the Lord, I'm thinking, oh, should I do it? I can't really do it. There are times I've forgotten to invite someone to church. There are times that I'm afraid just like you are. I go through those same emotions that you do. Will people like me? Will they, will they put me down? Will they embarrass me? Will they ask me questions I don't know the answer to? What's gonna, how, I go through all of that. But I can promise you, that I still have the power source, the same power source that you have. Watch this, watch this, watch this. I don't have more of him than you have either. You don't have less of him than I have. We all have the same power source in the person of Christ. The question is, are we willing to tap into him to be able to accomplish that? And so he's given us power for outreach. So if you've got a relative right now, you have all the power necessary to give you the courage and the ability through the teaching and the prompting of the Spirit to somehow probe them with the gospel. This church, we may be small and we don't have all the stuff that other these big box churches have, but I want you to know we will and can make a difference on this island for the gospel's sake because we have as much of the Holy Spirit. We don't have to have any more of the Spirit. We got all. But it's for outreach. And I pray that we will not try to create some man-made methods merely for evangelism, but that we would know the heart of God and take whatever we have, give it to God, and watch Him turn this thing into something great. Power for outreach. And the last one is power for ministry in the church. We also know that God gives gifts, spiritual gifts through the Spirit, Spirit gifts to us for the purpose of building up the body so that we would then do more to serve the body to grow the body. So it's power for ministry in the church. Now that is very important because some of you now, as our church is where it is, you're saying, boy, we need to do this, we need to do that, someone ought to do it. Can I tell you that I agree with you? We need to do this, we need to do that, except here's why I don't agree with you. You ought to do it. Do you know that here, there's acres of diamonds in the flesh that's here. Acres of diamonds of the Holy Spirit of what God wants to do through your gifting. He brought you to this church and not another church because God wants to do something through this church, through you here, and that's why you're here. And so there's a there's, there's a ministry waiting to emerge out of this church through the Spirit of God. He's giving you that ability. The moment you say, I can't, you won't. When you say, I can't, but he can, I will, it'll happen. Did you hear what I said? When we say, I can't, but he can, then we will. Now take that to the bank. I'm wondering that if we're at this stage right now is because we have not honored God by relying on the Holy Spirit Stepping out on faith to be able to do what God really wants us to do. And we will, we will degenerate into a maintenance ministry of us four no more shut, shut the door. Now we'll love each other. We'll have a lot of fun with one another. But we will not grow and be a, a force for God on this island. And it all goes back to the Holy Spirit. He was promised to come. He came to us. We have the person of the Holy Spirit. It's not an it. It's not like those signs of natural power. He's a person. He's God. The presence is for those who know Christ as Savior. He is abiding with me. And He lives inside of me. And He has given me all that's necessary to bring honor and glory to Him. Through a changed life, through outreach in the community, and doing ministry with one another. So let's... Uh, Let's release the Holy Spirit, shall we? Let's pray. With every head bowed and every eye closed. I love you, my friends, and I love the Holy Spirit, and I love to see when lights go on in your eyes, when you're finally understanding who He is, this one truth at least for today. And my prayer right now is that you have a greater, more accurate understanding of who the Holy Spirit is. But now the important thing is, is He's not just a, a truth in the Bible, but he's a truth for daily living. So I have your heads bowed and your eyes closed as I hopefully am humanly coaching you of how you should be processing this right now in the privacy of your mind. Right now, respond to the Holy Spirit who is telling you that you have missed the mark of his perfection, that you've sinned. It's not how bad you are or how much sin you've done, it's just you're a sinner. So am I. Respond to the Spirit of God when He is now telling you that no matter how many good deeds you do, they'll never outweigh your bad deeds and going to heaven is not based on any good deeds you do. It doesn't mean stop being good. 
It just means stop being good thinking your good deeds will get you to heaven. That's part of it. Respond to the Spirit right now who is speaking to you that He's saying right now you need to trust Christ as your Savior. Don't put it off. Don't wait. Don't think you've got to have more truth. You have just enough now that will get you into heaven because you heard that Jesus died and He rose again and going to heaven is by faith alone plus nothing, minus nothing. The Spirit of God is telling you that. Not me. The Spirit of God through the Word of God is telling you that. So you have a need. He's pointing you to Christ who will meet that need. But there's still one part, that's your volition, where you've got to trust Christ. He chose for you to be here today to hear this message. It's quite likely that now's the day that you need to trust Christ as your Savior. So here's what you do. You say, I'm ready to do this. What do I do? Well, it's hard for me to coach you in this because I don't want it to be so canned. Somewhere along the line, you've got to be talking to the Lord and essentially calling upon Him. Not begging him to be your savior. He wants to be your savior more than you want him to be your savior. So all you've got to do is say, Lord, I'm trusting in Christ right now. I'm telling you, thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross and giving to me eternal life. Thank you that I don't have a hope-so salvation, but you'll never leave me, so I have a no-so salvation. I am trusted in you. and you, lo- you know right now, the angels in heaven are rejoicing. God is smiling. The Holy Spirit is now fulfilled in your life for your salvation part of actually going to heaven. Now the Holy Spirit wants to continue to work in your life so that your life here and until you get to heaven will have more victory and all, but that's all after you've trusted Christ. So if you're simply saying, Lord, I'm a sinner, but the best to know how I'm accepting Christ to be my Savior, you will not perish but have everlasting life. Now with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're saying that to the Lord in some measure, genuinely, it's by faith alone, and you'd like for me to pray for you, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to slip up your hand in a moment. Now, raising your hand won't get you into heaven. I'm not going to have you walk an aisle. I won't have you stand up. I will not mention, listen, I will not mention your name in my prayer. I will just generally pray for just general, those that have raised their hand. But I'd like to know if you've trusted Christ in here as your Savior today. Not in the past, but today. Today is the day you know now you're going to heaven. You have that Holy Spirit given hope, that promise that you're going to heaven. And you'd like for me to pray for you. So with heads bowed, eyes closed, so you won't be embarrassed. Without saying a word, as quickly as you can, slip up your hand and put it down. If today is the day you're calling upon the Lord to be your Savior. Would you slip it up? Anyone at all? Put it up, put it down. God bless you. And you. Anyone else? And you in the back. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else? All right. I encourage you to tell someone. You might want to put it on the card. You might want to call me, whatever. But that's a private matter. You can do it all alone if you want to. Very private. Whatever you say stays here when you leave here. Now, how many of you realize that you've kind of been giving the Holy Spirit like the third person on a totem pole, kind of the bottom of the thing? You haven't really seen Him as God. And now you're recognizing that He is God who wants to work a mighty work in you, in your life, daily life. And also to help you to bring glory to God through sharing that message with others. And helping to build up the body and ministry in the church. And you'd like to have prayer because you're saying that you want to engage the Holy Spirit in your life in a biblical way. And you'd like for me to pray for you as you now face life with new meaning, understanding the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And you'd like for me to pray for you. Would you slip up your hand? Is there anyone at all? Anyone at all? Thank you. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have revealed to us the Godhead and that, Father, that the Holy Spirit is very significant not only in bringing us to the saving knowledge of Christ but also saving us and staying with us to help us to grow. So, Father, we have a no-so salvation but now we also have a say-so salvation and that we will now take this changed life. Thank you for it but now glorify you with it. Now, Father, I pray for those that indicated by an uplifted hand that they talk to you in prayer and not necessarily little speeches that they pick up other places, but just a little talk like a a child would to a dad because you are their Heavenly Father. I pray that they would begin to read your word and when they have questions to ask, knowing that the Bible does not contradict itself. And I pray that, Father, that they would meet with other Christians of like faith just to help them to grow. It's not a denomination, religious, other believers. They might share that with others. 
I pray all of us would allow you to work more fully through us, individually and corporately. And Father, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This is Joe Pons, and I want to thank you for listening to Make It Clear with the teaching of Dr. Stan Pons, founder of Make It Clear Ministries and president of Clarity Christian College. Make It Clear is dedicated to taking the Word of God with clarity into every person's world. It's the support of listeners like you who make the ministry of Make It Clear possible. You can provide your tax-deductible gift to Make It Clear online by going to makeitclear.org. That's makeitclear.org. Thank you for helping us make it clear. If you would like to have Dr. Pond speak at your church or event, please email us at tellmemore at makeitclear.org. That's tellmemore at makeitclear.org. Thank you, and remember to make it clear.